Of course, it was only a matter of time before somebody came and desecrated a statue of Jesus Christ. And now we have the story. Jesus statue found beheaded outside Catholic Church in Miami. Diocese expects hate crime investigation. We don't know who did it. We don't know why they did it, but we can make some assumptions. To begin our investigation, I think it's fair to look at what's been going on in this country. Statues are being torn down. We have seen certain uh, uh, religious symbols, notably the Virgin Mary, be desecrated and burned. And we have seen high profile Black Lives Matter activists calling for the destruction and desecration of statues and notably statues of Jesus. I bring you now to, as most of you know, just to make sure I have the context in this video for anyone who doesn't know this, Sean King, very high profile. I believe he has over a million followers said, yes, I think statues of the white European they claim is Jesus should also come down. They are a form of white uh, supremacy, always have been. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark. Tear them down. He didn't say, have a polite conversation. He didn't say, rethink the image of Jesus. He said, literally tear them down. Well, here's the latest story. Can I tell you definitively that the far left came and beheaded a statue of Jesus? No, of course not. But I think it's fair for now to make the assumption because we know who is tearing down statues and not just statues of Confederates like the media would have you believe, but statues of Union soldiers. Hey, that's that. That's the latest we got here. How, how about the Daily Gazette? Saratoga Civil War statue demolished by vandals. 145 year old monument honored local Union troops broken beyond repair. How disgusting and despicable. That leads me to the bigger point of this segment. What am I really talking about? I don't believe anything anymore. I don't believe the polls. I don't believe the press. I don't believe the Democrats are on track to win. I just don't believe it. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. I don't necessarily believe Trump and the Republicans are on track to win. I just don't care. I'm so over it. You would have to convince me that a nation that is between 65 and 70 percent Christian, people are watching the far left destroy images of the Virgin Mary, Union soldiers, U.S. presidents, and Jesus Christ himself. And they're going, I'm going to vote for the party that's making an alliance with these people. I don't believe it. Unless, of course, the media really has convinced people. And that's a shame. Maybe, maybe most people have no idea what's really going on. But I look at this and that's maybe the only conclusion I can draw. If people really aren't paying attention, as to why these images, these statues, why this why they're being destroyed, why the violence is escalating around the country, why we are on day 48 of the Portland riots. Maybe they just don't know. And PR really is the most important thing. I mean, you can't sell someone a product if they never heard of the product, right? Well, you can't convince someone to vote in their best interest if they have no idea what's really happening in this country, which is why it's scary that censorship is prominent and real. And then the media runs cover for these big tech companies as they censor people. But I'll tell you what, man, I'm kind of just, I'm kind of over it. I am. I'm going to go vote in November. A lot of people are going to go vote in November, and we're going to see how things play out. Of course, there's still going to be a few more months of, you know, tit for tat, back and forth, political, you know, uh, campaign ads. Biden did this, Trump did that, and we'll see who wins out. But at this point, I, I just, I just can't believe that they're coming out and saying things like, look at this. Well, I, I, this is the wrong story. It's this one. U.S. party preferences have swung sharply toward Democrats, according to Gallup, that in the past month, it's now a gap of 11 points. Really? Man, these people, the, the media must have done a really good job. But I, you look at Tucker Carlson and Hannity, who have viewerships, uh, viewership breaking cable TV history, and it's hard to believe. But then you guys also got to consider that when it comes to cable TV, which is where liberals mostly get their news, it's almost, you know, look, it's, it's tens of millions more than Fox News gets, even though CNN's ratings are in the gutter and MSNBC is in the gutter and ABC, NBC, CBS, they don't do that well combined. It's a lot more. But then I throw it to Facebook, man. On Facebook, who's dominating? Ben Shapiro, The Daily Wire, and conservative outlets like Fox News. There is a prominent left-wing push on, on, these, on, on these social media platforms, notably you know Facebook, but it really is dominated by conservatives. Considering that, I just cannot truly believe. You know, look, in 2016, I really thought Trump was, would, would win if the machine wasn't rigged. You know, I, I, I just felt like there's, they're, they're not going to let him win. The, mach- the media machine, the system that's in place, 
They'll never let him win. I did not believe in this, you know, election system. And then Trump won. And I was like, wow, I guess the elections are real. You know, I guess like there really is a chance for outsider candidates to win. I don't mean like they're stuffing ballots or anything. I, I mean like the media machine was doing everything in the power to stop Trump and I thought it was going to work. Today, we're seeing the exact same thing. After I heard this story the other day that a statue of Jesus Christ had been beheaded, there's no, I can't believe it. I'm sorry, man. This country is right now, the other story I've got pulled up, Christianity is in decline, but still 65% of this nation identifies as Christian. Could it be that people just don't know that these far leftists are going around destroying things and that Joe Biden has just announced a unity platform with Bernie Sanders? And I think it's funny when these when these leftists on YouTube or whatever are like, if only Joe Biden really was far left. And they try and post you know, an image of me where I made a joke that Joe Biden was going to play a pull a Bernie. He was, was going to uh, basically come out wearing a Bernie Sanders mask or something like the joke was that he actually was far left. The point I'm making is Joe Biden in his efforts to try and win and beat Trump is calling for a coalition with far leftists who very often endorse support or at the very least ignore these kinds of things. So the question I had then upon seeing this story about a statue of Jesus being desecrated is maybe people in this country identify as Christian, but maybe they're not really Christians. How many of them are actually religious? I know a lot of people who say they're Christian, but then don't actually go to church, don't follow anything, don't know anything, and probably don't care. And that's the bigger question, I guess. Are we still really a nation of, that's majority Christian? Or has it become a nation of majority people who just say they are? Or could it be that the media has done a really good job of making sure people don't know? I don't know. But let me show you these stories. Let me, let me tell you what's going on with this Jesus statue. The Daily Caller says, A statue of Jesus Christ was vandalized Wednesday outside a Catholic church in Miami. An incident church leaders say they expect to be investigated as a hate crime. Less than a week after another incident targeting Catholics in Florida, the statue of Jesus was found beheaded and knocked off its pedestal outside of Good Shepherd Catholic Church. Father Edvaldo da Silva told WSVN that it's obvious the statue didn't topple over on its own and required significant force by hand. Seeing what is happening in our country, I presume so, but we don't have 100% assurance. Da Silva who has been the par uh, parochial vicar of the church for three years, also recalled an incident in Ocala, Florida on Saturday when Stephen Anthony Shields was alleged to have driven his vehicle into a Catholic church and then lit the foyer area on fire while parishioners were inside preparing for mass. Shields was charged with attempted second degree murder, among other charges. This was a presumably far leftist. We don't know. But we did have that guy on the American, uh, the Alaskan Airlines flight who stood up and threatened to kill everyone on the plane unless they accepted that Jesus Christ was a black man. Not an exaggeration. That's literally the story. They had to emergency land. And the dude, I guess, uh, I don't know if he's being arrested or treated for, you know, a psych evaluation, whatever happened. But I think we can see what's causing this trend in all of these instances. It is an escalation of the far left. Is Joe Biden himself far left? No. Is he further left than where the Democrats used to be? Definitely. You can argue that relative to American politics, he's moved pretty far left. But relative to the current state of things, he's not on the far left. So figure it out. I don't know. Call him what you want to call him. But Joe Biden, in his desperate attempt to appease the far left, has called for a whole bunch of far left policies that fly in the face of what he was doing only a few years ago in the Obama administration. They, they called Obama the deporter in chief. Now Joe Biden is saying things like moratorium on, uh, on deportations. Joe Biden's announcing this big green plan. Maybe we'll talk about it later. But he's definitely embracing far left policies relative to the rest of America. He's doing it because he wants people like this, these far leftists, he wants their vote. First of all, I don't think these people are necessarily going to vote for um, vote for anybody in the in the first place. Young people and the far left likely don't vote, don't care to engage. So I don't know who he thinks he's courting. But given everything we've heard from Joe Biden, everything we've seen in the streets and the 48th day of riots in Portland, you expect me to believe that the polls are continuing to swing in favor of the Democrats. It just, it just flies in the face of what's happening on our streets. But hey, maybe it's all about media messaging. The media will pull the wool over your eyes. Donald Trump said, you know, they're destroying statues of our heroes. Why? You know, Hans Christian Hag, Ulysses S. Grant, 
Jefferson, Washington. What did the media say? Trump calls Confederate soldiers heroes. And maybe that's enough. We talked a bit about it on the IRL podcast the other day that, you know, Kaylee McEnany came out and said that the science is on our side for reopening schools. She unfortunately was imprecise in her language. She said, talking to the president, you know, he wants a school reopened, saying the science should not stand in the way of this. We're going to reopen. You know, you got to take a look at these studies. The science backs our claim. What she meant was that when the science comes out, it likely will not oppose our view of what is correct, saying that basically the science will find we were right about this, and it already has. Instead, they take that one clip out of context, and now every single outlet is running the story that she said science should not stand in the way to imply that even though the science says it's dangerous, they don't care, which is not the case. So what happens then? You'll see these stories. Check this one out. This is from the New York Post. Man accused of punching NYPD chief. Cops on Brooklyn Bridge released without bail. You see this story. And these people are, are uh, you know, I got to be careful about what we can play here on YouTube. They'll, you've, you've got cops being injured in these brawls. This stuff is happening. It's been going on for almost two months now. We are seriously approaching nearly two months of ongoing riots around this country. Not as severe as the first week, but definitely in many parts in New York, in, in D.C., in Seattle, in Portland especially. But we had a national emergency in Atlanta. We had a national emergency in Utah. Around the country, the riots are still going on. People don't know because the media, the media has just, they're playing politics. They're playing politics harder than they've ever played politics. You know, I think, I think we're, in, we're, we're in serious trouble. I really, really do. And the reason I think so, the media doesn't need to report the news anymore because, well, they do, they do. But because of the rapid spread of information, you know, when it came to a story like, uh, let's, you know, Statue of Jesus desecrated, everybody knows, you know, you can put out a tweet, the tweet goes viral. So what happened is these systems created an incentive for these, these platforms to just, sh- you know, for people to share shot content. And that's all the media cares about now. But I think one thing that was, uh, people realized is the importance of media and political power. And that's been true for a long time. And over time, these political operatives have infiltrated and taken over the media. They formed a weirdo clique. Man, the other day, I saw a post from the New York Times. The New York Times, once again, literally just writing about one of their own reporters. And I'm thinking like, what is this? What's, ha- it, it, this is the, you know what, man? The media, it's more than dead. You know, I thought the media died a long time ago when they started playing these political games. But now to see how all these new news outlets just write about their own newsrooms and write about each other, They've become gossip blogs. So maybe that's the real problem. There's no news. There's no one telling you all this is happening. And of course, I got to tell you, man, even on social media, it's not necessarily possible. Most of the people who are going to watch my videos, we're going to see one of two things. You recommended the video because you probably already agree with it. You probably already watch my content. I know, you know, I I often ask people to share the video and subscribe. And YouTube's recommendation algorithm can introduce new people to my content. But it's a slow roll for what is relatively small in the grand scheme of things. But then you're you're going to see two things. If I'm talking about issues in which most of you already agree, you may hear a point. You know, I I might say something like, hey, have you considered this? And you go, I didn't I didn't consider that. But you already mostly agree. We are all being siloed into echo chambers across the board. And it's being it's becoming harder and harder to actually break through and convince someone of what's really happening around them. Case in point. The left doesn't even know, you know, what's going on with these riots. They don't even know that Jefferson, Washington was torn down. There was, a, there was this funny tweet from uh, this one anti- ne- never Trumper guy. And he said something like, is Donald Trump, like, who does he think our heroes are, Confederates? And then someone responded with, you realize Jefferson and Washington got torn down too. And he said something like, oh, if you're talking about that, you know, one or two statues here and there, like, you know, I don't think that's a big deal. It's just a small group of people. And it's like, wait, 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 wait. What do you think any of these statues being torn down was? Do you think someone went to the Washington Monument and like threw a giant steel cable and pulled it down with a tractor? No, every instance of a statue being torn down was one small statue with a fringe group of weirdos in a small town or in a city center destroying it. it w- so, so yes, Jefferson and Washington being torn down is on par exactly the same as Christopher Columbus and these other jurisdictions or the Confederate statues as well. 
Don't act like it's a different thing. That's that's the case. Yet these people literally have no idea it's happening all around them. How, how much do you want to bet people have no idea that Frederick Douglass in, I believe it was in Rochester, was, was, was desecrated? This dude was an escaped slave, a, a brilliant man who challenged the United States to uphold its, its, its values of freedom and liberty. And even his statue got torn down. These are the kind of things that I think, you know, when I look at the data, people are actually, they actually care about. But if you don't get the news, then how can you care about it? I think, you know, based on the things I've said on Facebook, I've, I've talked to a lot of people, see what they post. They really have no idea. They share memes for their information and they get lied to left and right by the press, but they trust the press. How do you convince someone that these news outlets are lying to you? I don't know. The other day, like I mentioned with Kaylee McEnany, was one of the best examples that every single outlet lied about what she said. And if you listen to what she was actually saying, it was the opposite. And they do it all the time. I wonder if, you know, many of these people just do it because they want to personally enrich themselves. These are, these are, these are, these are tough times. Let me, let me show you what's going on with the, with the Democratic Party swing as, as it pertains to what I'm talking about. Gallup says, since January, Americans' party preferences have shifted dramatically in the Democratic Party's direction. What had been a two percentage point Republican advantage in U.S. party identification and, le- uh, and leaning has become an 11 point Democratic advantage with more of that movement reflecting a loss in Republican identification and leaning down eight points, uh, then a gain in Democratic identification and leading up five points. You can see it. Look, here's the point I want to make with this. I've had the conversation several times. We saw a segment on Fox News. On Fox News, I believe it was on Fox, they said that when the pollsters call them, they lie. I hear this all the time from Trump supporters and conservatives, that they won't be honest with the pollsters when they do get called, and it's rare they get called anyway. One thing you need to know is that pollsters only call a couple thousand people and there's hundreds of millions in this country. Some people, uh, one of the conversations we've had that I've had with, with, with friends and like the IRL podcast is that if, if journalists really are lying about people, doxing people and are partisan left, why would anyone admit to any of these people? You don't want to get canceled, do you? This is one of the theories to suggest the media is completely wrong about everything, the same as they were in 2016. But I have have, have an idea to add on to this. First, let me give the context. Let's say you know the media is lying about everything. And then you get a call from the Washington Post and they say, hi, I'm a reporter with the Washington Post. We're conducting a poll and we want to know who are you voting for? Would the average person, if they think the media is going to lie and defame or try and cancel them, would they admit it? No, they're going to be like, "Uh, uh, Joe Biden, Joe Biden for sure hoping that they're not going to reveal too much. But maybe not. Maybe that's wishful thinking. Maybe many people are just saying, here's the truth. We don't know for sure. There's something else, though. When I keep hearing the rhetoric from the right that they lie to the pollsters, I hope you all realize that it is a scientific fact, okay? At least as far as I know, because we've read studies, I've read several studies about this, that many people just vote for whoever they think is going to win. So when you see this, when you see American Americans party affiliation, when you see all the polls, there are a lot of people who don't know, don't care, just want to fit in. So they'll say orange man bad if they're told to, if the media says the orange man is bad. If they see all these polls now skewing in favor of Democrats, potentially because conservatives are lying about who they want to vote for, then there's going to be a lot of, you know, I don't know, just non-initiated people who are like, I'll just vote Democrat then. That seems to be what everybody's doing. I can't tell you. I really, really don't know for sure. We, we may see an upset like we did in the UK. Maybe not. But the main, the main point here is, I, you know, when, when, when word first dropped that Sean King had said to tear down statues of Jesus, that actually scared me. Because I kind of felt like, look, whether or not people in this country are devout and, you know, are, you know, going to church every Sunday or whatever, this country is overwhelmingly Christian. And this is, this is people's faith. I kind of felt like, man, if they start tearing these statues down, it's going to get violent. It's going to get bad. Because you, you want to talk politics, fine. People can argue politics, but you talk faith. This is the core of people's being. This is their, this is what, this is their etern- eternity. It's everything to them. I, I, was, I was worried that if these things started happening, and I felt like they would, that's when, that's, that's when it's going to get nuts. So after seeing this story, I'm now supposed to believe all these polls? It's too hard for me, man. I can't do it. 
Sometimes they've, they've, they play something in your face that may be true, but it just seems so ridiculously counterintuitive. You just can't. I'm sorry. I can't. Come November, I cannot believe that Americans would, would stand around being like, I, I, I'm actually OK with Joe Biden, you know, pandering to these people. I don't know. One theory is that Joe Biden wins because the, the, the media, you know, made it work. And then things get so bad under the Democratic leadership as they try and cater to the far left for whom they've empowered. It gets so bad that the country swings further right than you could possibly imagine. I can't tell you. What I can tell you is I'm done listening to the media. You know, I'm done listening to anybody about what they think is going to happen. The people saying, here's why Trump's really going to win. Here's why the Democrats are really going to win. And I'm just going to say, you know what, man, in November, go do your thing. You must ignore all of it. Go do your thing. Go to the, go to the polling place. Submit your vote. It's the best you can do. Or I guess mail in your vote. But I got to admit, I'm not even confident that we're going to have that. I th- it's, it's sounding more and more like we're in for a wild ride come November. You know why? Because mail-in voting combined with COVID, economic issues, accusations of cheating, and nobody's going to let the other side take this one. I don't think so. They're gonna, it's going to be nuts. Hope you're ready. I'll see you on the next segment coming up at timcast, uh, timcast.net at 4 p.m. I'll see you there.